so good afternoon to everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us for this talk, um, Why Reinvent the Wheel. Um, First up, a quick um, thank you to our sponsors and the wonderful team of folks who've put time and effort into making VSConf EU a reality. Um, just to introduce myself, if you haven't met me already, uh, my name is James Ruskin. I'm a senior solutions engineer at Chocolaty Software. Before that, I've been kind of through a fair few roles that you can kind of boil down into a progression between the IT-friendly intern who happens to do a lot of packet analysis uh, to help desk technician, to system slash network administration, to DevOps engineer, and then to my current kind of roles. Um, and as somebody correctly pointed out last night, uh, the photo I've been using um, for the last uh, while uh, is quite out of date, so if we can actually update that to be slightly more aged, cynical, however you want to look at that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna just note that I am liable, likely to apologize a lot, um, probably speed up, and uh, if I start doing that, please just let me know. Uh, I'll try and bring it back down and uh, just be a little bit more understandable. We're here to talk about Chocolaty for Business. Um, we're gonna briefly cover what Chocolaty is, uh, what, it, what Chocolaty for Business adds to the free offering, and what it can do for you or someone you know. I'm gonna assume that you all know roughly what Chocolaty is already, um, but we will cover it briefly. So, to start off there, uh, Chocolaty CLI was released 13 years ago and is still available as open free, uh, sorry, free open source software. Um, it's a package manager for Windows, um, so if you're familiar with stuff like apt-get, yum, or brew, you've probably seen something like this uh, and used it. And back when it was released, this was pretty revolutionary and I think quite appreciated by people who were seeing um, the clicky install everything kind of methods go a little bit away and kind of the focus on management through PowerShell and other command line tools kind of come into focus. Um, and we're here at PSConf EU, so that seems quite relevant. Um, but anyway, if you actually go searching through the source of Chocolaty or uh, diving into the packages that you can download, um, you can actually see that Chocolaty CLI runs PowerShell under the hood. Pretty much everything it's doing starts off as PowerShell, and uh, package maintainers have to deal with that. Um, right now, you can actually literally open a folder in your Chocolaty install directory and look at everything that Chocolaty's doing, which I found to be fantastic back in the day. Um, and of course, we've got a community repository uh, that has over 10,000 unique packages. Uh, and as of a few weeks ago, over three billion downloads, which is pretty, <laughs> only a small percentage of that was actually Adobe Reader being patched. Everything else is okay. Um, you may have also seen Chocolaty GUI, I'm um, <laughs> not gonna spell that one out, which is um, the portion of this that makes it a little easier for people who aren't so familiar or comfortable with the command line to work with uh, packages. Um, it runs Chocolaty commands via a shared library uh, and allows you to configure just about anything you can do with Chocolaty in uh, a GUI application, uh, which can be nice if you have people who don't want to go uh, typing out configuration commands. You're probably quite happy with typing those things in, but not everyone likes it, so um, a lot of the business offering inside is, is kind of around addressing that sort of thing. Um, it features big clickable icons, um, and of course it enables what we term self-service management. Um, you can also do that with CLI, but I'll come back to that in a second. Um, and that's in combination with the background agent. So the question I'm here to try and put in your mind and then answer, because um, for some reason when I'm at events like this, people will come up to me and chat about how they've used Chocolaty for ages or they enjoy using it at home, but maybe not at work, and you know, can you actually do that sort of thing? Um, the general next question after I've kind of got through all the motions is, actually, you guys have a business product. What do you, what do you sell? Because um, obviously the community repository is free, Chocolaty is free to use, you can use that at, in a business whenever you want. It's great. Um, and yeah, um, we do have a business product. Um, you, you're obviously in a talk for that business product. Um, I love to, and yeah, as I say, I've used Chocolaty myself for years in an open source context. I've been in companies that have licensed it, and then I've come to work for Chocolaty, which is um, great. Uh, but back in the day, I didn't use it for half the stuff I use uh, now with customers. I wasn't actually aware of most of it, which is why we've got talks like this. So what is it? What can it do? Um, we've talked about CLI and GUI uh, over the edge there, and you know they're both freely available to use. Um, I'd like to introduce, introduce us all to the rest here. 
Um, basically, to start off, we've got the Chocolatey license extension, which, allow, which adds a couple of different tools, such as package builder, package uploader. Um, it allows you to have some additional features around security and um, just resilience, so the stuff like package throttle, which will allow you to restrict um, uh, the download bandwidth for given machines, uh, which is helpful in limited resources like this conference Wi-Fi, for example. Um, it's got a bunch of other stuff around uh, allowing you to use the Chocolatey CDN. So if you are using packages from the community repository uh, and there is a URL that, say, has died, changed, or otherwise been modified, you may still be able to get that from the CDN, which can be helpful. Uh, and of course, uh, and we'll come back to internalizer in a second. Uh, the Chocolatey GUI license extension has some similar features. Uh, at the very least, it allows you to apply some additional branding. So if you did want to have something that looked a little bit more first party, or if you're an MSP, for example, then you'd be able to use that to brand the offering and show your customers that this is something you can use. Um, going on from there, because uh, obviously those are just extensions of the open source stuff, we have Chocolatey Agent and Chocolatey Central Management, which is, I think, where it gets, um, I'm gonna use the term exciting, but you're welcome to read into that what you will. Um, we've got um, Chocolatey Agent, which is the secret source to the thing I mentioned a second ago, the self-service um, software installation. Uh, it also allows for some reporting back into Chocolatey Central Management, which is a fairly lightweight uh, deployment management and reporting tool. Um, so if you wanted to manage a selection of Chocolatey running machines, you could do so from one centralized location. And you might say, why, would, why do I need all those things? Um, I know PowerShell, I know how to write PowerShell, I know how to write jobs and scripts and products that can do all this for you. Um, I think, oh sorry, I'm, these are the business part, obviously. I think um, basically the answer is you can, but, oh I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, where are we at? Is that all right? It was. Um, so yeah, you totally can. Uh, write anything you want. Uh, and as I said a second ago, I spent a lot of jobs doing exactly that. But as you might have guessed from the title of this talk, if you're remembering that, um, you can see where I'm going. Uh, as a business, you probably don't want to spend time and money to, main to maintain something that will actually you know, do the things you want. If you can pay a reasonable fee, I hope, uh, in order to have a supported product that does all these things for you. It's a solved problem. Why not let somebody else do it? The obvious example to this, um, I was in, well, sorry, I should say I really like this line. Um, and I hold that I heard it in London first, uh, one of the meetup groups. Uh, I think Gail might have even been there, but uh, it's hard to tell. Um, when I was trying to find it though, it was in an article that's linked in a second. Um, and I've really appreciated it over the years because it, it is a, it's a good lesson. So the quote is, build the things that advance your mission that differentiate you, buy everything else. And that's actually by Jeffrey Snover. Um, so, you know, a nice example here. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, written down an example there because one of the things that I wanted to bin for the longest time uh, is, of course, running an on-premise exchange server uh, and being able to hand that off is something that never added value to my business but was something that I could give to somebody else for a reasonable cost. And that's kind of where it comes down for me. Why reinvent the wheel when there's something that will do it for you? Uh, indeed, um, with the open source stuff, with the Chocolatey Community Repository stuff, um, why worry about, uh, sorry, this, there may be a solved problem. If you're looking for an installer for something and you're wondering about the silent arguments or anything along those lines, you can go and see all this wealth of knowledge of people that have already gone and solved the issues. So to get back to our topic, how can Chocolatey for Business save you time or someone you know's time? Or, well, actually, um, because I had to have a natural example that definitely is just a uh, fab icon, uh, fab icon. Um, a lovely image. Um, we've got Joe the sysadmin here. You might know a Joe, you might be a Joe, you might have been a Joe. That's more likely given that you're here. Um, but so you're probably past that stage. Uh, I feel like I've known a lot of people who have been rushed off their feet with supporting users, uh, continually having to manage tickets, and yet trying to improve the company by writing new processes and doing projects to upgrade stuff in place. Uh, so using the SAR example, You can tell that this email's been faked, uh, not just because they're so excited for Notepad++, but also because I can't really draw anything. 
Um, using that example, we're going to go into demos. Hopefully. So, to start off, we are going to talk about. Uh, sorry, I should say that this is not going to be used <laughs> in the demo, so I won't use that, but I will say that, you know, to solve our issue of, is that of a reasonable size? Okay, thank you. Uh, so to solve our issue of uh, a user who has requested, for example, Notepad++, here's one I downloaded earlier, obviously, because, again, this Wi-Fi isn't the fastest. Um, we can use something called Package Builder. So you can launch that by, yeah, of course. Uh, so yeah, the, the code should uh, come into PowerShell in a second, so it won't be necessarily to read it, but uh, I'll do so anyway. So we're gonna launch Package Builder. You can actually do this by literally right-clicking on uh, an installer, um, but I'm just gonna do it here. Uh, and you can see that this is one of the products that's installed with the Choxy licensed extension. Um, so it'll try and automatically populate uh, stuff. You can actually override things that it will try and figure out from the installer you give it, such as the ID, the version, et cetera. If you've maintained packages before, I'll provide an example in a second, but if you have, you'll know what I'm talking about here. Um, and then, you know, it's as simple as giving it that, telling it where to do it, and then hitting generate. Uh, so an example of a package. Uh, can be found. Over here, and you can see that the basic layout. Oh, that was, uh, sorry, one second, please. I will use Notepad. Sorry, not Notepad. This. So an example for packages here, and you can see that essentially, when you break it down, it's got a new spec for that metadata that we were just showing off, um, ways to override it, and then you'll have a selection of install or uninstall scripts. So in this case, we have Cloudflare, and it goes off and downloads something from GitHub, um, checks that the checksums are all matching, and then installs it. Uh, and you can see that Package Builder has quite quickly come back with, hopefully, uh, a completion notice. Uh, we should then be able to just close it up. We can have a look at our files here, which should replicate what we just saw in the other directory. Uh, and yeah, we've got that there, and it's brought down the exe. Uh, sorry, it's, it's packaged the exe, I should say. So what we can actually try then is showing that this works. <laughs> I'd hope it built a uh, working, um, a working example. So I'm just installing using Choxity. Again, this is yeah, it's a nice example for us, but maybe less friendly. Okay, so yeah, that worked. Well, said it worked. We should also be able to see that. Too fast. That we have Notepad++. I probably should have shown that I had nothing up my sleeve before we did that, but uh, all good. So yeah, uh, we can see then that we've got our, our similar looking metadata, and hopefully um, Package Builder has also gone and had a look to see if there are any silent arguments that we've got. So if we have a look at our Choxity install script, uh, we can see that we haven't. What we can do then is we can push that up to our Nexus instance. And you might be asking, well, why do we need a Nexus instance? We have Choxity Community Repository. Uh, in this case, it's because we rate limit people who um, use too much of the community repository. There's a fairly reasonable limit there, but uh, it does essentially just prevent people from loading up entire networks and then downloading packages thousands at a time. Um, that is helped a little by, well, sorry. Um, that, that's not helped by licensing, but it is on the other hand, uh, helped by having essentially a proxy repository on your local network, which you can then um, basically use to prevent overusage of bandwidth and the like, uh, which again can be useful in some situations. So we can just push that up to our internal repository. And that's it. 
uh, kind of, so it was kind of to, you know, if we were trying to install that for somebody, uh, we could then go and use CCM, Chocolatey Central Management. So this is the product we talked about briefly a second ago. Um, and obviously, you know, we, we've, we've got the vague view on, on what's going on here. Um, we have a couple of computers, I'll admit not very many, because that's uh, how it is. Um, and some grouping and whatnot. Uh, if we wanted to then deploy that software to our computer, we could create a new deployment plan. Uh, add a quick deployment step. And just install Notepad++. I'm going to do that to use machines, which currently only contains uh, our theoretical requestees laptop. We can then go and kick that off, and hopefully within a couple of seconds, it will have been picked up and deployed. <coughs> but I'll just introduce us all to the groups feature, as apparently I need to. So CCM as a, sorry, Chocolatey Central Management as a product is a self-host uh, thing. Uh, we don't currently offer any kind of software as a service there. And how are you communicating with the client? The client uh, reaches out. It's a, um, yeah. Uh, uh, and it's a configurable delay and, and so on. So you can basically have it reporting in at a reasonably regular cadence and uh, have it deploying at certain times um, if you want. Uh, yeah, it actually runs over port 24020, um, so it's, uh, it's, it's not, uh, well, it is secure, but it's not HTTPS per se. Sorry. So, theoretical user Bob. Deploy that. Uh, and of course, you can schedule uh, deployments. You can um, so have them scheduled for given uh, deployment windows. Uh, you can have repeating deployments, um, all this sort of thing. So if you wanted to, say, ensure that Firefox, whatever, was upgraded at a given time every day before users got in after they'd left, entirely possible. Uh, we should be able to see that that will go through in a few seconds. Um, another nice thing that you can get out of these deployments is, I don't know if you've tried to debug a failing package install at any point, but uh, it'll essentially ship back all the logs if you do have a Chocolatey package that is deployed through it. So it's really easy to start troubleshooting what's going on if stuff does start failing. Just while that's going. Uh, you can also do advanced deployment plans, uh, which are basically arbitrary PowerShell without the wrapper of a Chocolatey package. Um, this can be really helpful for stuff like being able to manage groups via the API. So if you had a machine requirement that you wanted to ensure you had CCM checking it, something into a group, you could manage that through an advanced deployment. You could do more complex upgrade scenarios. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, something um, that I've been having fun with has been using package sync to pull software into uh, package management. So if, there, if a user has installed a piece of software that is not currently, install, uh, not currently managed by Chocolatey, um, you can use a feature called package sync to basically pull that into alignment. Uh, there's actually going to be a demonstration of that tomorrow in the plenary room at, I think, quarter to ten, which will be uh, no doubt an early slot. Um, so yeah, you can add these advanced deployment steps and do things like that. And it's, as with many things, just PowerShell under the hood. So looking back to that that deployment plan, we see it's completed. So it got picked up and run fairly quickly, and with any luck, we should be able to see that our user, Bob, has Notepad++. But I cheated there because I forgot to uninstall it. I apologize. Yeah. 
Okay. So, a second user request comes in. Uh, for the sake of this argument, let's say they want uh, somebody to install Firefox, which I've already used as an example here. Happily, in this case, we don't need to worry about creating a package. We've already got it. We've already approved that software, um, and we're happy for the user to have it. So, do we need to do any work? No. Um, what we've actually got there, the thing that I keep uh, alluding to, is uh, self-service. So we have here our Bob non-admin user, um, which you know you've, you've got no administrative privileges. You haven't got elevation. You can do stuff like Choco List to see what you've got locally installed, um, and that will work if you uh, don't need to write to the config. However, um, if you wanted something more friendly, uh, you could go to uh, Chocolate GUI, which allows you to basically see what you've got installed as a user, and then if you want, trigger installation of additional packages from feeds that your admin has actually allowed you to see. So just as a quick comparison here, um, we've got two feeds here, this PC and Chocolate internal, uh, but if we look at our admin account, we can see that the same machine has three feeds. Uh, that's just, you know, you'll exclude some feeds that it's based on a setting that allows you to hide fee I fear some feeds from admins, which is nice if you want to have a selection of software that you don't want users to have access to. Um, and of course, you can manage this in various ways by allowing users access to some repositories that have software for a given department or group or location, um, which is all very handy. But the magic um, behind Chocolatey GUI and Chocolatey Agent uh, if you wanted to install Firefox, again, you know, we can't actually install it here. Uh, no, we will do in a minute. Um, but uh, because we're not an admin. But in either of Chocolatey there or Chocolatey GUI, we can go ahead and install our Firefox package. And again, sorry, I haven't cleaned up the config file that I had a minute ago. And this is just coming from our local Nexus repository. So you can do this with just about anything, have a maintained uh, selection of software that you allow users to install if they want it, uh, if it's not objectionable. I apologize. Uh, and there we go. So we have got Firefox. Uh, and of course, yeah, so this, this guy had no administrative rights. Um, so, we mentioned that, we mentioned also, you know, we've showed two ways to get packages down. Um, we mentioned earlier that the community repository has a vast amount of packages that already exist. Um, and you, yeah, uh, you should be able to just use those. So we also have the tool that I mentioned called Chocolatey, uh, sorry, Package Internalizer, which uh, we can show off here. And although I will tab away straight afterwards. So by nipping into desktop, we can do something along the lines of uh, internalizing Cloudflare, for example, which is a package I maintain. Uh, and we're just going to download and internalize that from the community repository. Um, Thank you, I am on Bob. Well, there we go. Uh, so uh, Chocolatey GUI requires elevation in order to perform that sort of thing, unless you um, basically have an install location that doesn't require elevation, but it will still prompt. Um, Chocolatey Agent uh, is uh, running a service in the background as another user that does have uh, elevation. You can either use the default, which is essentially a Chocolatey local admin user uh, that is created automatically, or you can provide a domain or other account in order to use that. Uh, there are a couple of permissions you require, but it's fairly simple to set up. Uh, no, um, so the question was, uh, does Chocolatey GUI in detect the, agents in the agent being installed upon installation of Chocolatey GUI? No, it's just checking uh, on the 
I, I'm sorry. So the question is, uh, how do you tell GUI to use the agent rather than any other thing? Uh, so there's a selection of configuration values that allow you to set um, which commands you want to allow users to use. So generally, I think the default is install, upgrade, and uh, uninstall. Um, and you can, you can go from there. There are obviously a lot of commands. Not all commands do require admin, but yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, and thank you for the question while it was downloading there. Um, so, yeah, that should have downloaded to this folder. Uh, and we can actually compare the... We can compare the two versions of the package. Um, I showed uh, from momentarily the Cloudflare package a second ago, uh, and you can see that it didn't have the binary. It was referencing the GitHub uh, location, so it would go off and download that using the CDN if that was available. Um, but otherwise, uh, when you run package internalizer, it'll go, it'll find those files, it'll download them into your directory. Um, in this case, it's taken both the x86 and the 64-bit uh, version, and then it will go and replace those um, locally. Again, you can obviously script this, but there's a tool that does it, which is nice. Uh, and then it'll build that and have it available for you. And of course, yeah, sorry, you can put this in a pipeline. We, do, we provide a bunch of different examples for um, quick start environments, essentially. If you wanted to use this as a trial, just check it out. Um, we have an Azure Marketplace image. We've got a selection of PowerShell scripts that you can run to set all this stuff up with a Nexus repository, fairly well configured, um, CCM, uh, and of course, Jenkins in this case. Um, so you can see the, the example here, but you can do the same thing and basically just have a couple of different jobs and these are just PowerShell under the hood, running commands just like that. Uh, and you can have that go off and internalize a package. Let's go with regular Firefox in this case. Uh, yeah, let's go back to Firefox. And that'll just run away, and you can give it a bunch of things. Um, we then have a couple of different jobs that we go along with there to basically automatically go and find packages that have updates on the CCR, internalize them, and push them up to your repository. Uh, so these examples are all available, and you could use something like that to quickly get all of your packages being updated. This will work in Azure uh, DevOps, uh, GitHub Actions, GitLab Runners, whatever you want. As long as it can run PowerShell and Chocolatey, you could put scripts together to do that. But it's, yeah. So, I think that's all for the planned demos, but is there any obviously I've provided more emails that I forgot to show. Um, but yeah, so hopefully I've covered my main points there. Um, with package builder and internalizer, you can and some of our example scripts and jobs, you can have packages that are automatically created and updated uh, to your push to your repository uh, of approved software that you can then have your users uh, able to install without needing to give, grant them worrying access uh, using Chocolate GUI and self-service. And then finally, you can use CCM to manage deployments and report on what software there is available on those endpoints, which hopefully will leave you able to have some fun. So, any questions? Or any more questions? Please don't say no CCM's available. There is indeed. Uh, so there's a, uh, the question was, um, some people don't like to click things in order to create deployment plans. Is there a way to automate that with e.g. an API? Uh, and the answer is yes, there is a robust API. Um, and again, we have a series of examples on docs.chocolatey.org of ways to automate creation of deployment plans. Um, there's also a selection of different um, options, such as uh, uh, there's an endpoint to create a deployment plan that will allow you to 
pa uh, upgrade everything that's outdated. So you could have uh, tasks that would do that sort of thing. Did that answer the question? Yes. Yes, sir. I see. Uh, sorry. The question is, can you contribute private packages to the repository? Uh, and in this case, you're referring to the Chocolacy community repository? Um, sorry, um, oh, just... Right. I would like to use it in yeah. Use. No, that's fair. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so um, the question uh, elaborated it was uh, that there is potentially a customer with a private or internal build of something that you might want to deploy. And yes, uh, so Chocolatey at its most uh, you know, basic supports, uh, I think, a dozen kinds of installers and will allow you to drop binary files just on disk as the Cloudflare package did a second ago. Um, you can absolutely push private packages to an internal repository. We prefer, uh, restrict you from pushing private packages to the Chocolate Community Repository. It's a community repository, and you probably wouldn't want to push it anyway. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, so yeah, you'd, you'd basically have it, uh, and you'd push it up to Nexus, and then uh, that would be available for any machine that had added that Nexus repository to install. but it could be in Azure or um, stored anywhere. Sorry, it doesn't have to be on-prem, on-prem. Sorry. Anybody else? Yeah, um, what ch repository types do Chocolatey support uh, was the question. Uh, in this case, uh, Chocolatey supports, gosh, um, the, the easiest things to use in, in this and the ones that we've deployed and used as examples here are NuGet v2 repositories or v3 repositories, which are also supported. Um, you can go as simple as using a literal file share, um, but we don't necessarily recommend you do that in production. It's very useful for testing, but uh, uh, there are advantages to NuGet repositories. Um, so the question was, can you use any NuGet v2 or v3 repository? Uh, and the answer is essentially yes, but there are some uh, criteria around authentication that may be an issue. Uh, I have actually forgotten which things are currently supported, uh, but I can provide the link to that if anyone is interested. Uh, it, uh, so, uh, the question is, is CCM usable for MSPs or would you install an instance per customer in those cases? Um, CCM does not currently support multi-tenant. Uh, however, you can absolutely, with the licensing, install multiple instances and then use stuff like the API in order to generate reporting and control things remotely. Um, so, not currently ideal, but would work. Any other questions at all? Or would anybody like anything particular demonstrated? Next one. Then I guess we can have a few minutes back, if that's okay. Uh, I suspect I've forgotten a brief summary slide that has a couple of links. Uh, so yeah, if you are interested at all in trying any of this out, uh, give us a shout at chocolate.org slash contact. Uh, we can sort you out. Um, please come and join the community if you're interested in chatting about anything at all. Um, there are a lot of chatty and very informative people in there. Um, and also in here, to be honest. So if you want to speak to any of them in person, uh, we have a booth just around the corner. I'm sure you've seen us, and I'm afraid we've run out of T-shirts. But um, yeah, uh, please come find me, Paul. Manfred may even chime in if he wants to. And of course, there's that short talk tomorrow, which will show how to deploy a um, patch of vulnerability very quickly using CCM. And that'll be in the plenary at, I think, quarter to 10. Thank you very much.